Hi, I'm Mark Hubble. Welcome to the Photographer Academy. And today we're talking all about dance. And the good news is, though, I'm not going to be throwing any moves. I'm just going to talk to you about the kind of the way that I shoot in studio um, the majority of the time. Obviously, dance photography is in its own right a, a, a creative move, a movement, of course. And, and I've got to be adaptable. But as far as style is concerned, you'll, you'll pretty much have your go-to kind of setups to kind of shoot, uh, whether it's at the beginning or kind of, you know, during the middle of the end of the shoot and things, you'll, you'll kind of be relying on things. Uh, we're seeing uh, kind of some of the kit um, that you're going to be seeing in this shoot, in fact. Um, the first part of the shoot, um, we're photographing to uh, kind of edge light. So in other words, we're using two background lights, one at the kind of the one to the two o'clock position, another one at the, the kind of the uh, 11 o'clock to 10 o'clock position. And their job is to accent the edge of the body. Um, so if I didn't have any kind of front light or, or overhead light, we'll talk about it in a minute, hitting the subject, and this was, say, a black background, we would have fantastic edge lighting when right around their bodies, uh, creating an almost silhouette of their kind of face, as it were, if they were pointing towards camera position, or if they're pointing towards the kind of the three o'clock or the nine o'clock position the, uh, the other way, one of the lights will light the face, the other light will light the body. As a rule of thumb, when I'm shooting with the two um, separation lights, they are metered to the same. Okay, I tend to work with a slightly bigger depth of field with most of the dance, so I tend to be photographing around about the F11. So it means that uh, whereas I usually have these lights set um, for around about 5.6, it's not about 5.6, it's exactly 5.6, um, and I do, I do that because, remember, the light behind be, appears twice as bright. So even though I want a working aperture of 11, the light that is metered from their face to the light itself would be metered to 5.6. Um, you'll find that you kind of when you meter, you'll get these consistent results time and time again. What I don't want to do is have burnt out high lights, of course, especially if they're in a leotard with kind of a lot of bare flesh, which is the majority of the time. Um, if the light from behind hits them and it was metered to 11, in fact, as it comes off, it would increase its value by twice the amount and then it would be at F22. So hence at 5.6, two stops, 11. So then I can kind of work here. The key light um, is going to be a, a kind of a dramatic light. And I want a kind of almost a theatre stage. So whether I'm using a spotlight or in this case, I'm using a beauty dish above with a honeycomb attached, this is to actually throw a very small pool of light down onto them. So if I was to switch these two accent lights off and all I had was the one light from above, this would obviously usually point down, uh, downwards onto the uh, dancer. Uh, with their body turned away from the light source, then actually their face would be lit and then obviously kind of transform down the body. But these three lights together combined will create some really, really great dance photography. This, of course, would be metered to the exact exposure because it's not coming from behind, it's coming from above. So hence, it would be metered to the F11. Um, I kind of just got this little dolly stand. I don't even think they're in production now, but it kind of folds away and kind of packs away into the boot of a small car. Uh, it's, still, it's still great, one of my fav uh, favourite lighting accessories, but if I need something to go much higher, obviously I'd need to go for a C-stand and the lights off. So we talked about the light from above, as we're seeing here, we're using the uh, beauty dish and the honeycomb, but you'll see that during the shoot, um, I'll uh, change it across to a softbox. Um, in this case, it's the Fotix. This size is the 50 by 120 size. Um, it's one layer of diffusion on the inside to soften the light a little bit. But then we've got this uh, lovely egg crate, which would give me a, a direction to the light when it's pointed down, so it won't allow it to feather. So it gives me a very, very similar kind of quality of light, just bigger than what I'm going to actually achieve as far as the um, softbox uh, compared to the beauty dish is concerned. So beauty dish with a honeycomb on the front, Whereas the soft the soft box has got the egg uh, the egg crates, so that's the first setup. And uh, again, probably where I'm going to spend uh, quite a lot of the kind of the first fifth, fifth, 15 minutes with the dancer, 
where they'll be kind of jumping, leap, leaping, throwing shapes, freestyling as well. Um, and not every dancer can jump. That's the first thing to understand. And I call it the, uh, the height of flight. So the first thing I need to be is positioned lower on the ground, like we would for fashion photography, where I'm shooting in an upward direction. So that will elongate the leg, which is obviously good, but it will all also exaggerate the space from the floor to the dancer as well. We're actually not too far away from the background. So probably from the background itself to where the, da uh, the dancer is, is the full width of my arms, about six foot. Um, and then they're very close to the white edge. If we had another white vinyl paper, backdrop or whatever it would be, I'd put it in the front. So at least we've got less post-production work. I do prefer to use the white vinyl um, compared to a paper. Paper is slippy, it can break, especially on a laminated floor. And while obviously what I cannot do is kind of uh, uh, get anywhere near core, uh, causing damage to these dan uh, dancers. So I've got to make sure I've got a safe environment I don't think I've said yet, but dancers are the most amazing people on the planet. <laughs> um, they will absolutely work until they drop. They will try and over-deliver in everything that they do. And, and our job as the kind of the... Cap we, we capture a moment in time when a dancer flies or a dancer throws a shape. We have to get our technical ability right, because if we don't get it right, we've lost that moment, it's gone. And that's why the setup is so important to ensure that we're guaranteed to actually get those results time and time again. And for me, it's still one of the most exciting things, whether it's a young dancer or a, a mature dancer, I still love uh, working in studio or actually on location uh, and so on. Right, so we talked about one. Um, next set would be, obviously, if I wanted to do a high, a high key, I would just actually turn these lights so they would point against the wall and actually then they would be set to be two slots higher than the main light. Uh, so a little bit of reverse. So in other words, as they're 5.6 now, by the time they moved and kind of bounce off here, they're going to increase their value. So the reflectancy, and if I meter towards the light, if it was pointed towards here, we'd be looking at F6D, uh, sorry, the F22 because we're working at F11. So uh, it has to be two stops above, no more, no less. Otherwise, I've got to do post-production work. Um, so through, through the shoot, we'll kind of make sure that we add variety. We'll work together with the dancer to kind of create, uh, as I said, some great kind of looking shapes. Um, and then I'll usually kind of slow it all down, go a little bit more low key. Perhaps um, we'll add some gels into the shoot shooting towards them, uh, as I said, a little bit of a lower key to actually kind of create that little bit of dynamic. And along the route, um, I'm probably going to throw in a new background. I've just printed up, self-print one, um, to, uh, to actually kind of give it a, a bit of a go and see what it looks like as well. But I think you'll enjoy the shoot. Um, I, I, I'm going to enjoy it. That's the key thing. And if you know you're going to set yourself up to enjoy a shoot, then you're pretty much going to knock it out of the park as long as you're prepared. So keep the lighting as simple as we can. Keep it in a style management that you know how it works and you can repeat time and time again. But do not be afraid to switch lights on and off to change the different qualities and the different directions we go through. Enjoy the film. See you soon. Bye-bye.